Hello YouTube, it's time to bring you good news, really good news. There's a real evolution. F physicists created a perpetual motion machine. Listen to this. They had to grossly violate the laws of conservation of, ener of energy, but it turned out that nature itself violates it all the time. Mankind's age-old dream of a perpetual motion machine seems to have become a reality. In one very subtle experiment, physicists received more energy than they spent much more. And um, what I'm reading you comes from a Russian newspaper. Uh, just, just now I read it. And... Uh, but you will see the international scope of this discovery. But I'm glad that they put it in easy concepts to understand. So let me, let me continue. That newspaper reveals details of a sensational experience that will turn our lives around. It's Komsomolskaya Pravda, by the way, so that you know where I got it from. And they say it's the sun in a test tube. So the... The experiment of Dr. Xu Cheng Wang with colleagues is conceptually simple. Here, physicists send a very weak laser beam into a certain space. Suddenly, it becomes blindingly bright. So they upload a few photons and they get an artificial sun, at least enough to light up the laboratory. Where does the energy come from? out of nowhere. The laws of thermodynamics are blatantly violated. In fact, it is eternal, not yet an engine because nothing moves, but a source of power. But the engine is now clear about how to do it. it light can power, for example, a solar battery, and that can create electricity okay light can be used as a power for example a solar battery and this can be that can create electricity so let's not rush the miracle is possible only in the laboratory from experience to an eternal battery for your home the way is still too long but how did they manage to pull it to pull it all off the secret is in the space where the laser beam was injected to. There is a time crystal in it. Sounds fantastic. The time crystal is an artificially created state of matter and how everything works there. Here is the explanation. And by the way, you will hear more about the time crystals. It's a very interesting concept. So when people hear about the time crystal, they think that it is such a brilliant diamond uh, that will take you to the past or the future. But although the time crystal may look like a diamond, its name is extremely unfortunate because it has nothing to do with the time machine. It's all, it's about the perpetual motion machine. You will know, now understand why it was so named. It all started in 2012 when the Nobel Laureate Frank Wilczek predicted that there should be a special state of matter in nature with very interesting properties. This is a system that would oscillate without external energy and without spending its own forever. How can it be? It is known from high school that molecules and atoms are constantly moving because they have a certain temperature, energy. We were taught that when the temperature reaches absolute zero, minus 273 degrees, the movement stops. But no, in reality, the substance continues to move already without energy. The fact is that stopping is the, sp is the speed the speed is zero, okay? However, quantum mechanics forbids a particle to have a well-defined state. Near zero, yes. Exactly zero, no. So the movement continues. 
But where does the energy come from? Yes, from nowhere. It just exists. Eternal and infinite. They also say that this is a vacuum energy. These are the laws of nature. Of course, all this is wonderful for us because we're used to burning coal and firewood to keep warm. But the sun, does it shine for nothing? So it, it so is the vacuum f for nothing. There's nothing. Only the sun will go out some day, and the vacuum will never be exhausted. It is important to understand. We have not yet violated the law of conservation of energy. After all, the thermal motion of particles is chaotic, and chaos gives the same zero at the output. That is, each particle moves separately. But in general, the system is dead and doesn't work. Fluctuations of particles in one direction are compensated by fluctuations in the other direction. Well, Wilczek realized that sometimes it does work. He calculated that the substance can be brought into a special state when the vibrations become consistent. Correct undepth oscillations are no longer chaos. You can benefit from this. He called the state of matter the crystal of time or the time crystal. As I said, the term is unfortunate, but there is logic. In an ordinary crystal, there is a lattice whose structure repeats in space. And here too, there is a well-organized structure of vibrations, but no longer in space, but in time. As if time itself, contracting and expanding, makes the crystal work. All this was so unusual that both theorists and practitioners immediately rushed to check it. So by 2015, several works appeared in which the impossibility of a time crystal was proved. And in October 2016, Christopher Monroe received a time crystal in the laboratory. Since then, physicists have conducted about a hundred experiments. Time crystals are created in gas, liquid, and yes, in a diamond crystal. It doesn't matter on what basis you create a time crystal. Externally, it can have any shape. The main thing is to give the atoms a special state. This is done with the help of lasers, very low temperatures, strong magnetic fields. Again, there are many ways. Amazingly, a naked theory, so to say, that seemed insane in 2012 became reality just four years later. And 10 years later, that's today, time crystals are easily created in any laboratory where there is at least a little bit of suitable equipment. So the newspaper calls it the dawn of a new era. The significance of Dr. Su Chen Wang experience is enormous. This physicist of Chinese origin, but he works in Europe, can be compared to Marconi, who carried out the first commercial radio communication. Before Marconi, the radio was just a toy. Now, the Italian inventor turned the radio into a practical thing. So it is with time crystals. Yes, physicists obtained substances that oscillated by themselves, but to create the substance itself, they spent a lot of energy, and the vibrations locked in the crystal did not come out. It's like an engine that has no axle, no shaft. By itself, it buzzes, works, rotates somewhere inside the box. But you won't connect anything to it. But the Chinese scientist has connected. He guessed that it was just necessary to pass light to the crystal. The energy of the crystal came out to people. And this is a huge breakthrough. Another achievement of Dr. Chen's team is the relative simplicity of implementation. Before, physicists made three-dimensional crystals. The, they guessed that it was enough to make it two-dimensional. Like a stain of paint on paper, it works 
just as well and requires much less effort and costs. But what about the laws of conservation? For centuries, people have been trying to get a preferential motion machine and stumbled upon the laws of conservation of energy. But what is this law, really? Almost all perpetual motion machines crashed on friction. Everything seems to work, but then it stops because there is friction. Friction translates motion into this stupid heat. Remember, we said that chaotic movements at the output give zero. Heat is chaos, or as they say, entropy. When the gears of the car turn, they heat up, and you will, you will get nothing from this heat. Already at the beginning of the 19th century, they realized that stupid heat irrevocably consumes part of the energy of any motor. The famous third law of thermodynamics appeared. It reads like this. Chaos, entropy, grows over time, and sooner or later the whole universe will leave and get, go into this stupid heat. The world will perish. The stars will not. The stars will not shine. The hearts of living beings will not beat. No productive work will be out there. Only a disorderly hot broth of the substance which does not produce any work. In the twentieth century, they suspected that this was not the case. The entropy chaos of the universe should increase, but in fact, the opposite is true. This early universe was a hot, stupid broth. Then it became more complicated. Stars, then even more complicated planets. Life appeared and we, humans, are making more and more complex mechanisms. So the universe is getting tougher. The paradox was explained by quantum mechanics. The laws of the big world, planets, stars, people do not work at the level of elementary particles. Their time flows backwards, and stupid heat is not so stupid, and vacuum, that is emptiness, generates matter and energy by itself. But they said that there was an impassable wall between the microcosm and ours. Time crystals, as well as quantum computers, destroy this wall. Strange is not only the microcosm, but also our world. Of course, time crystals violate the law of conservation of energy. But isn't it constantly being violated before our eyes? I'll give you a rough but illustrative example. Here's a piece of paper. You can burn it in the fireplace and get some heat. Is that all the sheet of paper is capable for? But the instructions for launching the rocket are written on it. A person who does not know how to control a rocket reads the instructions and releases a huge amount of energy. After all, you can turn it so that this energy was contained in a sheet of paper in specially organized spots for printing ink letters. Therefore, some physicists began to say that information is also energy. In a sense, it is. But everything is actually much deeper. The universe, its structure, the way space is organized. This is the information that was created not by man, but by nature itself, or, if you believe in it, by intelligent design. It is this structure that is the source of infinite energy. We have only just reached this source. Well, the idea of a perpetual motion machine was right. There just wasn't enough technology. It turns out that, yes, magnets, balls of water, gears, and other rude things, so to say, were simply unable to extract what could be extracted in principle. The world is on the verge of an energy revolution and its consequences will be enormous. The title of the work of the scientists is Meta Surface Based Realization of Photonic Time Crystals. It was published 
in science advances in I believe the 5th of April of 2023, volume 9, issue 14. Here's a little bit from the abstract, because if you are interested in the work itself, you will read it. But here's what it says. Photonic time crystals are artificial materials whose electromagnetic properties are uniform in space, but periodically vary in time. The synthesis of these materials and experimental observation of their physics remain very challenging because of the stringent requirement for uniform modulation of material properties in volumetric samples. In this work, we extend the concept of photonic time crystals to two-dimensional artificial structures, metasurfaces. And this is more exciting than any science, fi fi science fiction. And I think this is great news, and I'm sure you will hear more about this. But I am positive about who should get the Nobel Prize. So thank you for your attention to my work. I will bring you more about the breakthroughs of science that I'm sure will impact all of us. If you can support my work, you'll find out how to do it in the description to this video. Please tell others about my channel and uh, please subscribe. Thank you.